In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear friend, I'm sure you're well. It is Tuesday, the ninth day of July, in the year of our Lord and Savior, 2024. Tuesday of week 14 of Ordinary Time. Today, we are on day 10 in our Novena for Family Deliverance. Now, today is the last day you can join and journey with us uh, just as we started together. From tomorrow, the 11th day, those you enter from tomorrow, you start from day one. That means you will finish 10 days after we have finished. Our gospel passage today is taken from Matthew chapter 9, verses 32 to 37. We come today to the end of the section recounting 10 miracles of Jesus, that is, chapters 8 and 9. The last miracle described is that of a man whose deafness arises from his being possessed by a demon. It follows immediately the cure of the two blind men a story which we did not read and which is told again by Matthew in chapter 20. It seems to correspond to the healing of the blind man Bartimaeus in Mark chapter 10, although there are significant differences. The man is brought to Jesus by the people. Jesus drives out demon and the man immediately is able to speak. There is a double reaction the people are astounded. Never has anything like this been seen in Israel. The implications of Jesus' divine origin are very clear. On the other hand, Pharisees were saying, by the ruler of the demons, he casts out demons. Elsewhere, Jesus will show the absurd illogicality of the people and of that charge. Stories of the blind, deaf, and mute in the gospel always have a deeper meaning, far more serious than physical blindness, deafness, and an inability to speak are being spiritually blind, deaf, and mute. The Pharisees in the gospel represent such people and we see it happening in the story. They are blind because 
they cannot see or do not want to see God at a work in Jesus. They are deaf because they do not hear or do not want to understand that he says, I mean what he says. And they are also mute because they cannot speak the words of life that Jesus gives them. The very same can happen to each one of us. Therefore, let us pray today to be able to see clearly, to understand what God says to us, and to be able to share it with others. This section of Matthew concludes with a general description or summary of what Jesus was doing. He was going through all the towns and villages of Galilee. He was teaching in synagogues. He was proclaiming the good news of the kingdom. And he was healing all kinds of diseases and sicknesses. But behind all that, and what has, that he does, is his deep compassion for the needs of the people. He sees them harassed and dejected, wandering and aimless like sheep without a shepherd guiding them. A familiar image in the Old Testament, you may want to read Ezekiel 34. Then, looking at his disciples, he says, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Jesus cannot do it all on his own. In fact, he will hardly step outside the boundaries of Palestine. He needs many helpers. And this is where you and I are called to help. And of course we answer this question. Can we be able to be used by him? Today, the situation has not changed. The harvest is as big as ever. People are as lost and rudderless as they have ever been in spite of the great strides in knowledge we have made. Where are the laborers? They are not just the bishops, the priests, the religious brothers and sisters. That is a very narrow concept of laborers. Every single baptized person is called in some way to be a harvester to help people find and experience the truth and love that God gives in Jesus. Every single person in that sense and is a very real sense has a vocation a call, a responsibility to serve and build the kingdom. What and where and with whom is my vocation? That is a question. Where do you stand? If we were to be counted, those who are doing it for God, would your name appear? Thank you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for all the things that you have done in our lives. Thank you for always being there, guiding and protecting us. Help us to learn how to fear you and 
in both respect and honor. Help us to serve you with all our heart, faithfully. Dear Lord, help us to recognize and worship you for all the things that you have done and are continuing to do every single day of our lives. Protect us as we go out and come back. Protect what we do, our businesses, our jobs, and everything that we hold dear. Bless and protect our children. Bless and protect our spouses. Bless and protect all parents, wherever it is that they are. Bless and protect our political leaders. Bless and protect our religious leaders. Be with us today and in every other day of our physical life. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. My dear friend, I remain your priest and servant, Father C.K., wishing you a productive Tuesday. Thank you.